Hey guys, this is Top Channel 1 on 1 and today we're going to be looking at how to create this kind of scene under 10 minutes. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, using volumetric lighting in Eevee and uh, also doing some advanced indirect light baking. So yeah, let's get started and see how this goes. So the first thing you want to do is set up your scene and I'm going to start with a plane and uh, scale it up. Uh, it's going to be a very simple scene because uh, again we want to do this under 10 minutes. So let's uh, use the plane and extrude ice edges. You can start with a default cube but because I changed my default settings to a plane I'm just going to start with that. And uh, add this hole, it's like going to be our door uh, into whatever scene we have here. So now let's set up our lighting and uh, we're going to use at most two lights, an airy light and uh, a sunlight and just to keep our setup very simple. Uh, it also helps on uh, reducing the computation time uh, since we're going to be using a lot of resolution uh, to make things look uh, great here. Uh, so yeah, now let's add some steps. Uh, for that we're just going to use a cube and then use uh, the array modifier to add uh, to duplicate them uh, so that they look like steps. So these are the values I'm going to be using. A negative one on the Z and negative one for the Y and that should give us uh, the steps we're looking for. The outside walls needed some thickness so you can add a solidify modifier to give them that thickness so that it doesn't look like a single slice of a plane. Let's also change our light from an area light to a sunlight because we want the scene to be bright and also have some harsh shadows that area lights don't really give you that much. I'm going to scale up my room just a bit so that uh, my camera can fit in and uh, capture the entire scene uh, nicely. You can also change the focal length uh, to capture more of your scene uh, if you want but I'm just going to stick with this. Now let's add an area light to cover the entrance. Uh, this is going to be used as a portal for cycles. What portals are they let Blender know where part of your scene are letting light in and that will help reduce on the noise in your scene and also reduce on the render times it requires for cycles to render your scene. Unfortunately portals are not supported in Eevee so and it doesn't really matter that much because uh, in Eevee they'll be just used as regular lights which will give us a glow effect around the entrance which is nice. Now let's add uh, some volumetric lighting and for that I'm just going to use a cube and uh, you don't have to cover the entire area uh, you just have to, to enclose the area where you're going to have those kind of god rays or that volumetric lighting. Remember the larger the area the more computation power it is going to require you to compute on uh, the volumetric lighting. The smaller the area, the better resolution you're going to get. So make sure you just enclose uh, the entrance and uh, and where those rays are going to go. go. So I'm extending this a bit because I know that uh, my uh, volumetrics are going to have that angle on them. Uh, that you see. So I'm just making sure that uh, I enclose all that area where that is going to be. Now let's play with the shadow settings uh, so that we can get better resolution for the shadows. Changing the cascade size will give you better shadow resolution for sun lamps and cube size will give you better resolution for other types of light. You can also change the tile size in the volumetric settings to get more details in your volumetrics and also turn on shadows to get volumetric uh, shadows. And if you increase your viewport samples, it will also increase the general resolution of everything you have in your scene including volumetrics, shadows and uh, light maps. Speaking of light maps, let's add one so that we can bake some indirect lighting and also get some fake global illumination uh, by doing that. If you have increased your volume and shadow samples and you're still getting that jagged shadows and volumetrics, try scaling down your scene so that uh, it fits the real world scale. For example, if the room is supposed to be about 10 meters wide, uh, make sure that your room in your 3D viewport is also uh, that scale. Otherwise, uh, the shadows are not going to look as good as they should, even when you increase the shadow map or the volumetrics. So make sure that uh, you work within uh, the world scale so that you get better results. Now just move your irradius volume to cover the entire scale of the room otherwise anything outside this volume will not be considered in baking light. You'll see that uh, when you're scaling this uh, the points within that volume will also spread apart and uh, these points determine the overall resolution of the bake. The more spread out the lesser the quality of your bake. So when you scale this up make sure to add more resolution on the resolution x, y and z to compensate for the lost resolution. 
when you look through that entrance there isn't enough light bright enough to create that volumetric effect so what i'm going to do is brighten up the environment so that we have the illusion that uh, there is enough light uh, to do that volumetric lighting so just add a plane and give it an immersive uh, light and also make sure to turn on bloom uh, so that uh, we can see uh, the blown up environment and then you can bake the indirect lighting to get uh, that bounce lighting in your scene now baking the indirect lighting has brightened up our scene so what we are going to do is add some dark textures uh, to our walls so that they can they can turn down that that uh, light a bit down and so that we have a balanced exposure the volumetrics look a bit too blunt so let's add a noise texture to break it up and add some detail in that so just add a noise texture and uh, put the factor into the density and scale down the noise or scale it up depending on what you want uh, play around with the roughness and uh, if you want to control the contrast of that noise you can add a car ramp and play with that as well uh, so that you get some nice detail into that the car ramp is going to help you control the contrast of the fog and then if you add a math node with the operation of uh, multiply it will help you control the overall density of your fog now let's add a character you can download this one free from renderpeople.com they do have a few free characters you can choose from you can play around and experiment with different colors to get a warm or cool environment after downloading the character you can import them into your scene as an fbx format uh, using the file import uh, option and uh, make sure to also import their textures amazingly render people assets come with pbr textures that work very nicely with blender so just connect them to their respective inputs in the principal bsdf shader and now you're good to go now all we have to do is pause the character uh, the characters again from render people come with a calm rig so we can easily pause them the rigs are very basic but uh, for this use case they are good enough and uh, if you want to get animated versions you can also find animated version on their site so just make sure you get an interesting pause as this is going to be the main focus of our scene I also added another character just to have another point of interest in our scene and uh, make the, the scene more interesting. By the way, if you want to look at uh, the project files, you can download them over my Patreon page so that you can support the channel. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, a subscribe uh, because it helps out the channel and uh, get it more exposure. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.